Shabbat Shalom, Happy Sabbath, welcome to the Assembly of Yah here at Marseilles, Illinois. It's not spring yet. It is the 14th of April. All the assemblies took the early calendar. They had ice storms, hail, tornadoes, snow, and that was almost three weeks ago to four weeks ago, and it is not spring yet, not until the 18th of April about four days from now. This is an important message today we have for you. This is a prophetic message about the book of Revelations, which is our specialty. We're going to talk about the chapter 16, Revelation 16. There's a lot of misunderstanding about that chapter and about the book of Revelations in general. We hope that you will be edified by this. We know that the spirit of prophecy, Yahshua, is going to talk to us today, not a man. And we're going to see mighty and wonderful things about his coming. We thank you for being with us. We pray that you will be blessed by this. And Yahshua will lift you up and give you courage to face the things that will shortly come to pass. Hallelujah. We're going to turn to our song book to song number eight, I Will Enter in His Gates.
34 if you sow to the Spirit. <clears throat> Beverly. Praise and worship is important. This is the Shabbat, the Sabbath, 
And this day we rest. This day we keep from sunset to sunset. This day is a symbol of the seventh day, the millennium reign of Yahshua, which we're going to talk about today. This is important. One of the reasons we did the Ten Commandments on the end of our praise and worship song session was because it says that those who keep those words, read those words, and keep those words of that book shall be saved. The basis of our covenant with Yahweh and Yahshua is the Ten Commandments. Everything radiates from those ten words, which were given by Yahshua to Moshe on Mount Sinai. We're going to do our prayer request now before Yahweh and Yahshua. And we would ask you, no matter when you receive this DVD, whenever you see this program, that you would pray for somebody for us. We ask you to pray for Dave and Anita Erb, and they are up near Boaz, uh, Alabama, right in their area. And uh, they just have a lot of things going on. Jan knows what they need, and we just ask you to please pray for them and that they do his will, and that they, that he just has mercy upon them. We'll be back in a few moments with our main message today. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. We have a very interesting message today. We're going to talk about Armageddon. Armageddon, that is an awesome and fearful word. It depicts all kinds of horror, destruction, blood, divine intervention. It is a, a very serious word depicting a very serious event. Before we begin, we're going to just introduce a couple of new booklets. Uh, we have talked about these on other films. Return to me, saith Yahshua. Return to me, a very, very important book. We believe this book is one of the most important books written in the last 50 years. This book is very serious, and it is the book, it is the message from Yahshua to all the assemblies in the body of Messiah to turn to Yahshua as their king, their headship, their savior, their husband, and master. Only for a few people have done that. Most of the body of Messiah has not turn to Yahshua. Also, about a 20-year study has been completed called the Book of Revelations Unscrolled. This is a complete study and analysis of the Book of Revelations. The Book of Revelations now is not a mystery. It's completely open. We know exactly what it means, what it says. We don't know the time frame, but we will. And here is a chart also that tells us three signs and that will verify the very start of the tribulation. It will be exact. It will be specific. It's not a mystery. You can send for that book also, Book of Revelations. Yahshua, our headship king, savior, deliverer. We ask you to bless this message. We ask you to speak to us, spirit of prophecy. You are coming to get us. You will judge the end time. You will be king. And you are a redeemer. Let every knee bow unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahshua, our mighty one. <clears throat> We're going to turn to chapter 16, verse 16, for our first introductory verse. Revelation 16.16. 16. We'll be in the book of cha chapter Revelation 16 almost the entire time today. And he, that's Yahshua, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. He gathered them into a place called Armageddon. The reason I'm giving this message today is two reasons. First of all, our, one of our main callings here is a study of Book of Revelations and what will happen in the end time. 
This is something he has led us to. We can't let go of it. He always, no matter what we talk, what we speak about, what we study, he brings us back to revelations. And I believe that he's telling us today that he's coming soon. Today on the Weather Channel, the weather people up there who have all the technology of satellites and, and internet and, and all the technology that, that can tell everything that's going on all over the planet as far as weather, admitted today that the storms are becoming so violent, they're becoming so unpredictable that they can't really give a clear forecast of when and where these things are about to happen, these storms, these hails, these tornadoes. The weather is a primary indicator today, along with sodomy, blasphemy, wickedness, homosexuality, the things that are going on, the decay, the rapid decay and darkness that is overtaking us, are the two primary indicators that he's coming soon. It's not Yahweh that's coming. It isn't Yahweh Father who died for us. It isn't Yahweh the Father who is king. It's Yahshua, and he's in charge. He's in charge, and he's coming soon. The second reason, besides always being brought back to Revelations, is this week on one of the 500 channels on DirecTV, which is not recommended, they had a special called Armageddon. And then during this special, I've tur we turned it off through half of it. It was about two hours long. On the special was Michael Rood. He was featured and also Monty Judah doing his prideful thing. And the subject was Armageddon. And they gave a two-hour presentation of the book of Revelations and what was going to happen in the Middle East. And this presentation really aggravated us because it was full of confusion and misinformation. They misquoted scripture, they twisted information, and did all they could to basically please and pamper the Jewish people and others that live in Jerusalem, Yahshua's holy city. The main points that they presented that they were greatly in error about are three to four things, and I'm going to list them right now because these are the points we're going to emphasize and look at in chapter 16. This was, uh, there is no mystery now why people in the body of Messiah and outside and Christians and Muslims and just people that are not even have a religion at all, there's a reason why they are so confused. And this program was one of those things. It was incredible. Number one, one of the things they said that was not true is that Armageddon is not a worldwide war. Armageddon is a place. We're going to show you that in chapter 16. Armageddon is not an event. Armageddon is a valley outside of Jerusalem, also called the Valley of Hamagadon, Hamagaridon, and it's also called the Valley of Decision, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, it's a place. It's not an event. That was the first thing that they made a mistake about. Second, it is not a nuclear event. They uh, said basically that there's going to be a nuclear war in the Middle East in the end time, and this is going to do most of the destruction. There is no nuclear war. Yahshua could not carry out the plan of salvation our Father has given us if we had nuclear exchange in the Middle East. But the armies of the East, and we'll talk about them, will be gathered together and pulled down, deceived and brought down into this valley to be destroyed. And they will be destroyed by great hailstones, very like the time of Egypt, where Moses and Aaron, the two witnesses of Egypt, brought down plagues to let Israel go after 420 years of slavery. This is not a nuclear war, and there will be no nuclear war. Number three, the third error that they mention is that there, there is nowhere in the book of Revelations talked about any nuclear weapons being used of mass destructions. The things that happen in Revelations are plagues that are called down by the two witnesses. 
there it is not war it's not man's carnal desire to destroy and to con control and to have mastery it's not about that at all it's about Paul calling down plagues on the wicked and the rebellious because they refuse the three messages of Revelation 4, 14. And I'm going to mention those several times. Revelation 14. Fear Yahweh and give him the honor. Number two, come out of Babylon and take not, the, uh, uh, be, take, not partake of their plagues. And number three, don't take the mark of the beast. Those are the things that are preached in the very end time. And that Yahshua is king, he is coming to judge, and he will come to destroy. He destroys about a third of the population, along with Father Yahweh, another third of the population. Number four, they said it's going to be worldwide. This major conflict in Armageddon is not worldwide. Almost all the destruction... And most of the plagues are going to be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, they did say, and they were correct about this, Jerusalem is ground zero. The man of sin makes a covenant in the fall of the year. He makes it between Islam and Jerusalem, the Jewish people, the Jewish state of Israel. That covenant lasts for seven years. And when he does that around the Feast of Tabernacles, some year, some year in the near future, three and a half years later, he goes in with force and troops, takes Jerusalem by force, and the clock starts. Because three and a half years from that point, seven years from the time he makes the covenant, Yahshua returns. Three and a half years later, he breaks the covenant, He's in Jerusalem. We find out that he is really a very evil, very bad guy and, and probably possessed by Satan. And he comes out with a mark. And he forces everyone in the Mediterranean area to take that mark as, as who will take it. Many will not. We know exactly when Yahshua has come. We know exactly the day, but we're waiting to find out what year. But there's not going to be a nuclear exchange it's not going to be a major war of conflict. Yahshua gathers the armies of the east together in the valley of decision and he destroys them. There is no war. He executes them. And the blood is up to the bridle of their horses. First main point. The book of Revelations, as we said, is now open. Send for the study. We've showed you the book here. Number two, the seals, the trumpets, and the vials of the book of Revelations, starting at approximately chapter three, are all the same plagues. It's just that they are of greater intensity. Yahshua gives them a chance to repent. He gives them a chance to humble themselves, but they won't do it. So he opens the seals. He is the only one worthy, chapter 2. He's the only one worthy to open the seals of the book. And the book is Revelations, and it's now open. Then, when he sees a rebellion, and he sees a sin and the blasphemy, he goes and he blows the trumpets, the seven trumpets. And the seven trumpets bring these plagues back again. Only they're worse. And then, as men shake their fist at him and blaspheme the El of Heaven and seek to kill the righteous ones, he looses the vials, which are like the same plagues, only like ten times worse. This is how he tries to bring the nations back to him. In the, in the presentation here, we're going to tell you who's going to die and who's going to live. Please stay with us. The third major point here is the people who are killed are the wicked. The wicked is a special class of sinners 
only they're doing the work of Satan. They come to lie, steal, kill, and destroy. They cannot sleep, sleep unless they do mischief. They are wicked. They're not just sinners. All Christianity breaks the commandments. They're not shown to them. They don't have knowledge of them. Most Christians are Israelites, and they're blinded just like Judah is. They're sinners, but they're not responsible because they don't. these things are not shown to them. They don't have revelation. But the wicked, they know what they do. They may not know who they serve, but they know what they do. And they take pleasure in hurting others and unrighteousness. So in the end time, when two-thirds of the population, approximately four billion people, are going to be killed on the earth, we have a great many of them that are classified as wicked. The second group are those who take the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is really the mark of Satan. Yahshua has marks. Satan copied and brought up and came along with his own marks, but Yahshua has his marks. And some of the body of the Messiah, even though they're baptized, don't have these marks because they sin against the very two things that are the marks. Baptism in Yahshua's name puts his name on their forehead. And Exodus 12, 13, I believe it is, it says that the Sabbath is a mark unto us. I think it's Exodus 20. Actually, Exodus 20. The Sabbath is a mark and a sign unto his people. And some people that know about that and who are baptized still break the Sabbath, and they know they are. Exodus chapter 20. So, we have the wicked, the ones who take the mark of the beast, and we have someone else. We have another group. This is very interesting because most of the body doesn't know about this. The next group are those who in their hearts, and this is cross-dimensional. This is people who are in the body of Messiah, people who are about to come in, people who are not in those who are not even called. But it's a group of people that will sub not, not submit and not follow Yahshua as king when he comes back. These people will also be destroyed because they he knows no matter how they are taught or who is sent to them, they will not submit and follow and learn Torah. I'll prove that to you. Go to Luke 19.27. Go to Luke 19.27. Yahshua says here in, in the book of Luke, he says, But those mine enemies, all right, mine enemies, which would not have that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Yahshua considers, as he is about to come back, those who will not submit to him as king, divine king, those who will not submit are enemies, and those will be eliminated. Father Yahweh says in Psalms 110.1, along with Yahshua, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Father Yahweh and Yahshua know that Yahshua cannot come back until all of his enemies, until all rebellion, until all blasphemy is put down. Because he's going to start fresh, he's going to start clean, and he's going to start with the people who will bow to him and keep his commandments. We are going to have righteousness finally on this planet. And it's going to be worldwide. And it's going to be wonderful, a wonderful restoration. Many of the people who are baptized in Yeshua, supposedly keeping Torah, are not going to make it. They are the tares of Matthew 13.25. Look that up. Matthew 13.25. They feast among us. They're right with us. The tares and the wheat are growing up together. You know that. There's people in your assembly or your groups you can't fellowship with because you know that they are not sincere. They're sinners. And many times they're liars. Look up Matthew 13.25. In the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25. 
ten virgins, Matthew 25. That ten virgins, and only five of them went in to the kingdom. Only five went in to meet Yahshua. Only five went in to be with their husband. Five of them did not make it. And it's telling us in Matthew 25 that of the people we think are going to make it, only half of those are going to make it. Half. So you can almost walk into any assembly of Yahweh, congregation of Yahweh, Messianic assembly, and realize half the people in that room are not going to make it. Be careful who you fellowship with. Because who you fellowship with is how you also will be judged according to their works. Next point. The plagues of the end time, as we talked about, the seals, the trumpets, the vials, are very much like, almost identical, to the two witnesses' plagues in Egypt, Moses and Aaron, that they called down, when Yahshua hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And that Yahshua said, I will get honor upon Pharaoh and upon his elves and upon his throne. And so he kept hardening Pharaoh's heart that Moses would come in and bring another plague and another plague. And finally, and finally, after the ninth plague, the tenth plague, Yeshua came as a death angel on Passover, and we're coming up on Passover. He came as the Passover, as the last plague, and killed in every house of Egypt the firstborn, man and beast. And then he turned around and said to Israel, all the firstborn are mine. We are the firstborn. We are the firstfruits. We are bought by him. We are saved by him. We have life only in him. Let's go to Revelations chapter 16 now. We're going to go right through the book. It's not that long. Revelation 16, 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of Yahshua upon the earth. Elohim. This is going to get real bad real fast. Verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a grievous noisome, grievous, sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. That's the image of the beast, the man of sin. This was his, Yahshua's first priority. He warned them. He warned them. He warned them by the witnesses in Jerusalem. The bad times of the tribulation last three and a half years. He's been warning them probably at least two years. Two years. Not to do this, not take this mark, not to worship the beast. And finally, he comes down and he brings this terrible, terrible plague. Verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of dead men, and every living soul died in the sea. This is the first plague in Egypt. This is the first plague of Egypt, where the water and the rivers became blood. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains and the waters, and they became blood. And I heard an angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Yahweh, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. This is Yahshua. This is Yahshua. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Yahshua El Shaddai, just and true, righteous are your judgments. This was the very first plague, this blood of Moses and Aaron that they called down. 
Let's go to verse 8 now. We're talking about the fourth angel. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of Yahweh and Yahshua, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him, Yahshua, honor. They were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed. In Leviticus 24, we're not going to go there. We read this a couple of days ago here in our house. In Leviticus 24, the punishment for blaspheming the name of Yahweh is death. Torah. Those who will not hear and do the angel's message of Revelation 14 are going to die. Let's go to Revelation 16.10. Revelation 16.10. This is the fifth angel. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. This is important. Remember what we said in the introductory statements of the message. Ground zero for most of these plagues is Jerusalem in the Middle East area, maybe within 500 or 1,000 miles of, the, of Jerusalem. The seat of the beast is where the man of sin reigns from. That's Jerusalem. So the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom, and with uh, kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the Elohim of heaven again because of their pains and their sores, and they repented not of their deeds. Now, this plague is like the sixth plague and the ninth plague in that of Egypt, you can read Exodus chapter 9, verse 10. Exodus 9, verse 10. Judgment upon the wicked. Judgment upon Pharaoh. Judgment upon the man of sin. Revelation 16, 12. Verse 12, we're going to the sixth angel. And he poured out a vial upon the great river Euphrates one of the major rivers of that area that was also in the Garden of Eden. Upon the river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the ways of the kings of the east might be made prepared. The Aswan Dam is one of the major water control points in that area. We believe that they're going to shut that dam down, they're going to close that, cut off the water, and this is going to create a war in the Middle East. There's not going to be a war, but it's going to create all the circumstances and all the fewer that go with the planning and marshalling of troops and arms to bring all those nations of the East to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the Valley of Decision. So this is a major, major event right here. Verse 13, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's actually only two men that are controlling Jerusalem. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of El Shaddai. It's also called the Feast of the Fowl. when he marshals all these nations down into the Valley of Decision. Yahshua is in control of all the demons. Satan is not in control. And he allows this to happen, and he sends them forth to do their work, and they're glad to do it. All of this, all of this message, all the book of Revelations, is a warning to the body of Messiah. And the things that we see in the natural, the things we see in the earth today, that we've already mentioned, is very clear that he's closer than we thought. He's closer to coming and returning than we really thought before. 
And he says in verse 15, he says, Behold, behold. Now this was, this was written almost 1900 years ago. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walketh naked, and they see his shame. They see his sin. He says, watch. Watch. And you'll know the signs. You'll be able to tell. He comes as a thief, but he doesn't come as a thief to those who are watching. He doesn't come as one stalking in the night for those who understand the signs of the times. He doesn't come as a thief to those who have made him king and husband and master in his life and they have fallen in love with him. And their heart is breaking because they long for his presence. They long for his presence. Verse 16. We started with this in the beginning. 16, 16. And he, that's Yahshua, gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. It is a place, not an event. This is called the Valley of Decision, Valley of Megiddo, Valley of Jehoshaphat, Valley of Armageddon. It is a place outside of Jerusalem, a large, large, flat plain area. This event that takes place in the Valley of Armageddon is spoken about in other places. Let's go to Zechariah 12.11. Zechariah 12.11. In that day there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of Hadarimim in the valley of Megadon. Hadarimim is a Hebrew word and it's not easy to find the, uh, the meaning of that word. Hadra means to outstretch your hand. Rimen is the name of two Syrian Ls, pagan G-O-Ds, which were popular and even today is served in different forms by these nations that are in the east that are going to come to the valley for destruction. This all makes sense. It all comes together. Let's go to Joel. Joel 3, 10 through 16. Joel 3, 10 through 16. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahshua, Yahweh. Cause your mighty ones to come down. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get down, for the press is full and the vats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. Yahshua. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Yahshua also will roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but Yahshua is the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel. He is the strength of those who seek him with all their hearts. Let's go back to Revelation 16. We're on 16, 17 now, verse 17. And the seventh angel, this is the worst. The seventh angel poured out his vial upon the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. 
and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. This earthquake occurs when the 70 pound talents of hail come down and demolish, destroy, and crush these thousands of troops in the valley. When that happens, there's a great earthquake also. And a third of the party, uh, uh, the third part of the actual city of Jerusalem is destroyed, and 7,000 people die. This is a terrible, massive event. This earth earthquake is so horrible that it's going to be felt thousands of miles from its epicenter. Thousands of miles. This earthquake will destroy the armies. They will be stoned, destroyed. 7,000 die. Jerusalem today is not a holy city, even though it is the holy city to Yahshua and Yahweh. It is called Sodom and Gomorrah. It's called Babylon, mother of harlots. Read chapters 17 and 18 in Revelations, and you'll understand that Babylon is not the United States. It is not a system. It's Jerusalem, and it's going to be destroyed. It has to be redone. It has to be made over. Verse 19, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities and the nations fell. Great Babylon came into remembrance before Elohim to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled out of its way, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about a weight of a talent. This is what happens in the Valley of Decision. The weight of a talent, 70 pounds. And men blasphemed Elohim because of the plagues of hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. It's not a war. No nuclear weapons. It's an execution. Yahshua has the power. He has authority. He has the divine privilege to execute all judgment. We talked about those who are going to die. There are four classes of people. And what that should be telling us is that if we are keeping Torah out of our heart and out of love, if we are seeking Yahshua with all of our hearts, if we fear Yahweh and keep His commandments, if we are humble and letting the love of Yahshua well up in our hearts, toward our brethren and toward him. If we are in that perfect state, that spiritual state with him and walking with him, these plagues won't come upon us. These plagues are judgment of those who are worthy to die. That is not us. This is good news because the wicked are going to be eliminated. The rebellious and the blasphemers are going to be taken away. Two are in the field, one is taken. Two are at the mill grinding, one is taken. Where? Where the vultures gather. The feast of the fowl. This is good news for us. We're tired of this darkness of this wickedness that we see every time we walk out of our out of our door and we go somewhere. Stay away from the cities. He said in the bundling of the tares, the angels will come in the end time and bundle up the wicked, bundle up the tares in groups, in bunches, and burn them. That's the cities. Lot was told by Abram, don't go to Sodom and Gomorrah. On the outside, their walls are white and clean, but inside is the darkness of men. Get out of the cities. Get out of the cities. Judgment is coming. 
and he's coming for us. And we will meet him in the air. In conclusion, the end time plagues and destruction is mostly upon Jerusalem, but there will be plagues and death other places. It will be worldwide, but not like the fewer and the concentration and the intensity of Jerusalem. It is time, brethren, to humble ourselves, especially as we come to the table this year, and turn our hearts toward Yahshua, humble ourselves, examine ourselves, as it says in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, to see whether our life is right, to see whether this life honors Yahshua, to see whether this life that we have and we walk is a life of righteousness. He is no respecter of persons. He's king of king, master of master, sovereign of sovereigns, the bright and the morning star, the Aleph and the Tav, the El Shaddai, the Almighty. He's coming. And this time he's coming as a man of war. Yahshua is about to start raising up men of courage, boldness, righteousness, renown, to stand against sin, to witness against blasphemy and, and abominations, and to rise up with a great voice. I don't care if you call them the two witnesses or the 144,000 or the righteous or Israel. It doesn't matter what you call them. But that is about to begin. The men in the assemblies have been too silent. They have been too passive. We have a voice, we have the word, we have the spirit, and we're obligated to speak righteousness. We're obligated to stand against unrighteousness. He is going to raise up an army of courageous men like Joshua and Caleb. They had a different spirit. They entered into the kingdom. They cross the Jordan. Encourage them. Help them. Yeshua is coming soon. We need to be ready to meet our beloved husband. And he is worthy of all honor, praise, glory, worship, dominion, and power forever and ever. The extent of his kingdom will be kingdom there'll be there shall be no end and this is father yahweh's will that we receive him as master as master of our life we pray yahshua that this has touched everyone that has seen this presentation today we know that you are speaking today you're the spirit of prophecy and you're telling us you're telling us you're coming quickly. And we pray that will be very, very soon. Yahshua bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with us today. If you have any questions about that, our email is in most of our booklets. Ask ya at pcwildblue.com. Our telephone number is 815 Three five seven nine nine two six. We pray that this has been helpful and encouraging to you today. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah.